The following program has been pre recorded, so please don't call in at this time. If you wish to participate in the program, tune in at 5 p.m. every Wednesday for A Pause for Thought on Baton Rouge Community Radio. Good evening, fellow humans. This is Wayne Parker with A Pause for Thought, coming to you on Baton Rouge Community Radio, WHYRLP 96.9 FM in Baton Rouge. This is a live call-in show, so you are all invited to call in and voice your views and sentiments on the topic of the day. And we have chosen a topic. I'll give it to you in a second. But if you would like to call in and share your thoughts, just dial 343-9927. If you happen to be outside the calling area and are live streaming on whyr.org, then dial the area code 225 and then 343-9927. Now, this is a call-in discussion show. We have a topic chosen for the night, uh, but we need not constrain ourselves to this specific topic. Going off on tangents related to the topic is both okay and encouraged. However, all comments must be voiced strictly as opinions and in a respectful manner. Anyone who wishes to preach or insult other opinions will be asked to adjust their attitude once. Okay, we're off and running. Um, as the title of the show implies I want to create a an environment where people can discuss issues that are important to them, our community, and to our state and the country as a whole. Basically a thoughtful forum for thoughtful people. And tonight's topic is a, another question. Is there such a thing as a bad human being? And with me tonight to assist me in the discussion and help provide with, you know, ideas and things like that are Kendall uh, we won't use last names, but Kendall, you can you can see him see his handsome face on the on the Facebook page. Good evening, Kendall. Good evening. And of course, John. He's been my stalwart since we started. Stalwart, not Star Wars. Sorry. Good evening. Thank you, John. Okay, so is there such a thing as a bad human being? Well, if you guys have any thoughts on that, I guess the word bad is has different meanings, or I suppose, or a concept. You know, is it bad like in bad vegetables or? I would say uh, bad in my mind, Wayne, would be evil. Is man basically good or is man basically evil? Well, now you're lumping us all into the same boat, and I, for one, am not going to be allowed to call, be called evil. Okay. So <laughs> so bad versus evil? Um, so I guess I can stick with bad okay. instead of evil. Well, you well. know, somebody responded on our Facebook page, and by the way, if you join our group, A Pause for Thought on Facebook, you can post comments on the air and also prior to each week's show because I put the subject of the following week up on the page. But anyway, uh, one of our followers, put when I put this week's topic up, responded, well, there are people who do bad things. And, that, yeah, Kendall? Right. That's right. Um, yeah, people do bad things. But the something that could be... Is is does that make the person bad though? Well, yeah, but what is a per, what is a bad person then? That's the thing. We <laughs> I think we all do bad things. Right. Um, is there a, a threshold, a number of bad things you do each day, or do we take a percentage of it? How is somebody judged to be a bad human being or a bad person? And are we talking about different things when we say person and human being? I would say somebody is bad based on uh, harm that they. Uh, their actions result in uh, others being harmed. Okay. That, that would be my one definition just to start off with. But as I said, though, we've all done things and we all do things and we're all going to do things occasionally that cause people harm in one way or another, some degree or another. So where where's the threshold? Where's the cutoff? How, where do we decide that somebody's good or bad? I don't. I think it's probably on a continuity, just on a continuous uh, line, so to speak. That at one end of the line, you can be uh, very, very uh, bad as a person, very evil, and on the other end, you can be totally good, as you are when you're born and coming out of the womb. That some people might say that right. we're, we're born good, but as we age and uh, experience life, then we all make mistakes. 
Okay. How's that sound? Oh, well, you don't have to satisfy me, Johnny. Oh, okay. Just, just keep the ideas coming. Uh, preferably you disagree with me cuz like I said when I'm when I'm wrong, I'd at least be the I want to be at least the second person to know about it. So um but when you say bad, okay? Think about the Nazi uh the guys that ran the Nazi death camps and work camps. A lot of them did horrible things during the day and then went home and spent the night with their families and children and were very nice, good people and probably were upstanding citizens in their community and everything else. Would you call those bad people? They do bad things, but um, I, I don't know. You're just following orders? I'd have to possibly disagree on that. Say that they're... If they, I mean, if they're following orders, it's it's. They're trying to protect their life, right? Good point, Kendall. Good point. In fact, um, reading Victor Frankel's account of his time in the work camps, he said there were fellow prisoner Jews who would be put in charge of work groups, and they were just as brutal, if not more so, than the Nazis, simply because they were afraid that if they weren't, they would get killed or something else so they they had other things preying on their mind and the same thing could be said for slavery in the in, in the US how so they the uh, the slave owners would put um the slave uh some of the slaves in in uh in charge of overseeing and uh of the other slaves and you know sometimes they'd have they'd have to deal out the punishments and sometimes if they were too lenient then they would get uh worse Wow, that's a terrible thing to experience. Now, looking at a person like that, would you would you feel pity for them, or would you say they're bad? Uh, again, I would have to agree with what Kendall says. There, people do bad acts; they do bad things, and result in uh, hurting other people to small or even larger degrees, like uh, the the instance that, that both of you just mentioned. Okay, uh, I'm looking here at a quote from Leo Tolstoy's Wise Thoughts for Every Day. And he wrote that when we are upset with ourselves, we do not blame ourselves, our inner self, our own soul. Rather, we blame our behavior. We should treat others in the same way. When they do something wrong, we should blame their actions, not their souls. Does that kind of agree with what you're saying or that definitely you... rings a bell with me okay and i can definitely uh, agree with that uh, yeah because really it's a, it's what they do to other people that matters right Right. now following up on uh both your comments about you know nazi germany during world war ii and slavery um eric Fromm mentions uh in one of his books um about some of the reasons for violence and uh basically he said Defense of life, freedom, dignity, property, all of which are rooted in fear, fear which can be real or imagined, conscious or subconscious. So I think if we, we go down some of his list, uh, where he lists some of the causes, we can start getting some appreciation maybe and some understanding of, of why people act in these, these cases. So we can get some understanding as to why they're bad people? Uh, why they do bad things. Okay. All right. Okay. Difference. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to call in, dial 343-9927. If you're outside the reception area and you're live streaming on whyr.org, then you would just dial the area code 225-343-9927. Um, we've been throwing the word bad around since we started. When you say someone is bad... What's your attitude behind that? What What do you mean by exactly bad? How would you treat bad people? I guess I put it that way. The bad people we're talking about. People who do bad things. Uh, people who do bad things? Let's see. Well, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not sure I know what I mean. You know, the the people who, who, who whatever, the, whatever the threshold is, someone who is past the point where we declare them to be bad. How do we How do we speak of them? I would say, uh, on what they do, I yeah, I would say those those types of people um, really are still bad in their behavior, and not bad soulfully, you know, uh, that we've talked about earlier. Okay, so 
but let's say there's somebody, let's say they're a serial killer or a serial rapist, something like that. Um, how do we deal with them? Okay, that's a good question. And the same question going back to how do we deal with the Nazis? You know, how do we deal with other people? Uh, wars going on right now. Uh, going back to Eric Fromm and comments I'm making right now, probably throughout most of the program, based on his book, The Heart of Man, where he talks about all forms of evil and all forms of how people react to it. So he has uh, basically one group that says love of life. We will do harmful actions to others in defense of our own life. Sure. And that is opposed to somebody who does harmful acts just for the joy of doing harmful acts. So he distinguishes between those two. So just because we react in violence toward another who has hurt us, I don't believe makes us any more or less violent than the person who does it uh, in similar fashion for different reasons, as long as it's for love of life. I mean, we all have to protect ourselves, right, if we want to live. We, we cannot just say um, it's okay when people hurt us and attempt to destroy us, nation by nation or one-on-one. Right. Um, that brings me to a, an idea or a point about let's say we have a young well there are a lot of it's in the news nowadays but a, a young African American boy growing up in the projects and every day he witnesses the police come in his neighborhood and I don't mean to beat up on the police I'm just this is a, a hypothetical situation but every day he witnesses the cops coming in the neighborhood and and abusing people roughing them up busting in on people and just being general jerks which in their defense may be a uh, kind of a defense mechanism or another you know some other way to maintain order there that they might otherwise not have but this kid grows up thinking that's the world that's the way the world works and so when he gets out on his own he abuses people he he robs people he he doesn't he doesn't he fails to have the respect for their property and their lives because that's how he thinks the world works what do you say to that I saw your wheels turning, Kendall, but um, if, if... The wheels haven't come to a stop. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Well, that, one, that's... one comment I've got there is, uh, pardon me, but I'll keep mentioning Eric Fromm's name. He says his belief, and based on his work, by the way, he was a psychoanalyst. Uh, he was also a philosopher, um, did a lot of research work. But he says that you take a, a deeply deceived person, disappointed in some of the areas of his life, and his life experience. Then his views change to one of life being good and justice where he's lived a good and he's experienced goodness and justice as opposed to experienced disappointment, shame. Then he no longer, he or she no longer believe in a good God, but believes more in an evil of the devil. Then that person begins to hate life, begins to hate him or herself. Then that person becomes much more easy to hate other people Sure. And do harm to other people because that is now how they think. Okay. Does that does that earn them a free pass then? Absolutely not. They still hurt people and they do bad things, and we have to protect ourselves from people like that. Okay. Well, you know what I'm going with. What I'm thinking of right now is our so-called criminal justice system. What is the general public's attitude, or what have you perceived to be the general public's attitude toward people? Uh, who commit horrendous crimes and are sent to jail. What what do most people, as far as we know, as far as we're told in the, the fear machine media here we have here in this country, um, what do most people think the purpose of our jails and prisons is? See, people think that it's a, for punishment and punishment only, but it really should be for rehabilitation, right? Uh, but... People seem to think it's all for per, the whole sole purpose of the the correctional system is for punishment, and um, I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah, <clears throat> I kind of lean that way too, Kendall. Uh, for one thing, what is justice? If somebody hurts you or someone you love and you hurt them back after the fact, is that really justice? I mean, they still have harmed you or somebody else, so you can't undo that harm. 
but we can prevent the person from committing that act again. Yes. And uh, I'm not so sure. Of course, you know, our, our overcrowded prisons make it impossible, I think, or very unlikely for rehabilitation. And, of course, a lot of those people that are in there shouldn't even be there. Uh, I think we know the reason for that. But um, they at least, we should put them in there and say, look, you know, we, we don't think you're a bad person. We don't judge you as horrible. It's just that you have this nasty habit of going around killing people. So we've got to put you away and, and until we're satisfied that you won't do it anymore. Yeah, to prevent you from going out and continuing your, your ways, you've got to contain them. Yeah, you got to learn to contain what you're feeling, sure. Right. I mean, we all get angry, and sometimes angry enough to throttle somebody, but if we don't do it, then nobody cares, really. It, you know, except I think it hurts us. I think such emotions are very bad for ourselves as well. So maybe uh, when we start talking about prison and we start talking about justice, uh, maybe that's on a, a um, sort of a, uh, a scale, let's say, of one to a hundred where one is the the smallest uh, act of violence and a hundred is the most violent which is murder then I think what we're uh, struggling with as a society is okay where do we where do we place a number in terms of violence and then on the corresponding scale of justice where do we where do we place that you know okay you go out and rob a bank you know where does that fit on the scale of rehabilitation and imprisonment as opposed to, okay, you're, you're uh, arrested for possession of, of drugs. Okay, then you go, uh, you're separated from society because you're viewed as harming society, um, rightly or wrongly, by possessing drugs, as opposed to, maybe more rightly, you've, uh, you've harmed people physically and bodily. So you definitely have to go to prison for definitely a longer period of time in some way. So I think that's what I hear you talking about and asking questions about. Yeah, that's that's a difficult concept, I think, Johnny, because I was thinking in terms of if there's some way, and there, there really isn't any uh, concrete way, but if you can demonstrate you have been rehabilitated, then why not let you go now? If you no longer po pose a threat, I guess is the way to put it. But then again, you know, how can you guarantee that? Now, somebody um, like the Birdman of Alcatraz, so to speak, Robert Stroud. Okay. By the way, he was not a Birdman of Alcatraz. Never was. He he didn't have any birds on the island, contrary to Burt Lancaster's movie. But um, he had committed two violent murders. But you know, when he was like 78 years old, physically, he's pretty pretty much done in I would think you know unless he's an anomaly so he's not going to hurt anybody why keep these guys in jail until they die of old age when they're going around in wheelchairs and and everything else so maybe the question I hear you asking or what I'm hearing is if we are human beings are inherently evil or bad instead of just doing bad acts then once they've done a bad act are they always bad for the rest of their life and are they always capable and predictable to go out and do bad regardless of whether somebody or some group of people say, okay, you're rehabilitated, you're free to go? Yeah, I know, but so. I would take exception to one thing. I hope I didn't give anybody else the impression that I think people are basically evil uh, because I don't, actually. I think that we're born divine, so to speak. We're pure at that point. Barring, and this was one of the points I was hoping we'd get into also. By the way, before I get too far into that little point, uh, I did want to remind the, the listeners that you can call in at 343-9927 or uh, dial the area code 225-343-9927. Call in and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. And also, if you have another perspective on what we're talking about, that would be welcome as well. 343-9927. But, yeah, a baby's born, and... As far as we know, it is a divine good creature. I mean, it has this basic animal instincts, basic animal instincts, because after all, we are animals. Um, right. It's debatable, I guess, whether we're at the highest end or not. I don't know, but that's another topic I suppose we could think about. Um, but uh oh, Kendall, you were going to say something. There's, there's, there's some debate about that too. 
because some some religions out there will uh, let's see even in Christianity will will be will say that people are born evil. Well, um, that's kind of where I was going with my point. What if somebody is born with some kind of genetic anomaly, something something wrong with their brain, something wrong with their biology that makes them inclined to be violent, and it's something that is just wrong? Uh, hang on a second. We got a call coming in. Good evening. You're on the air with a pause for thought. May I know who's calling? Well, it's Clay. Okay, Willis. You said. I'm sorry. You said Willis. I said Clay. Oh, Clay. Okay. Oh, well, it's Clay. Okay, now I understand. Okay, Clay. What's what you got? Well, I, the I like I've only tuned in recently. I was the point is one point, but uh, we had talking about prisons. Why are we? Why would we not let people out of prison? And I don't want to comment on whether this is right or wrong, but I think as a society we use our prisons not for re- rehabilitation, but as vengeance. Um, we, we, I think, I think they use sentences as a as a way to, you know, if you have somebody who's a truly psychopathic multi murderer, you'll have three life sentences. Well, nobody's going to serve three life sentences. We do that to show that that crime was especially heinous and it deserved more. Uh, time. Um, the idea, I think, un- and I think it's probably unfortunate, is that we use uh, we use prison and as vengeance and not as a way to um, rehabilitate people. I think you're absolutely correct, Clay, and that's um, I think, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong or, or challenge me, but I think that revenge is a is a natural human impulse. And the way I define a natural impulse is one you engage in before you start thinking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 uh, but just because it's natural doesn't mean it's not something to, we should maybe work to overcome. The, uh, you know, there's a, I did a, a job one time where I, I worked at uh, Angola. Angola is interesting because there is no parole system in Louisiana, and so you have um, life sentence basically, you know, nothing but life sentence people there, and there's there's no getting out, and they do incredible work over there, rehabilitating people, giving them life skills, job skills, all for people who will never, ever live on the outside, barring new, you know, new evidence coming into their case, which is very yeah. Um, uh, you know, and it's, 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 a, it's a little odd to me that we have neither, you know, a, a parole system, nor, uh, nor our, our jail system was, uh, Working with people, uh, the 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 the, uh, the idea of whether we're born good or born evil, um, you know, certainly kind of as you guys were talking about. But the uh, you know, it's very. I think it's very difficult, and maybe even uh, 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 arrogant to when we try to uh, act like we have a really good uh, thumb, our you know, our finger on the pulse of what is good and evil. Uh, and there's a lot of gray areas, and people do a lot of things for a lot of different reasons. And with all that nuance, it seems, uh, it seems like rehabilitation might be a, a nice, uh, a more intelligent option uh, for, uh, for the, how to treat each other. I think you're probably right. In fact, I have a friend that I visit and correspond with who is in Angola for life for a crime he committed when he was 17 years old. And oh, a minor. Oh, yeah. And he's, 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 I think, he's pushing 40 now, but yeah. he, he, he's a voracious reader, he's, he's well-spoken, and he has a lot of talents, but sometimes he despairs and thinks, what's, it all, what's the point of it all? Why should I do these things? I'm not going anywhere, I'm not getting out. And that's, he has satisfied society's revenge in that regard, you know, in, in that he's in there for the rest of his life. And he acknowledges why or what got him into the situation where he was accused of the crime in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I'm convinced he wouldn't, you know, if he was able to get out and get a job and become a productive citizen, he wouldn't fall back into that. He was a drug dealer in a poor neighborhood in Baton Rouge. You know, you know the story. A kid who never had a chance when he was growing up. And, Sure. Uh, and so now he's paying for it for the rest of his life. And I, you know, I agree. Um, anything else? No, man. Other than I'm enjoying the show, and uh, I appreciate you letting me on. Oh, I appreciate you calling. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you, sir. Okay, 
He made uh, some pretty good points. Yes, he did. He did. And and revenge, I think, is the biggest thing. And and like, like he said, it's rather arrogant, I would say, that um, we think we are qualified to judge somebody and impose revenge on them ourselves. Right. How many things have we done wrong that we've got away with, you know? In fact, I knew a guy years ago. I read a book um, that he he'd said that he... Um, if he's accused of lying and ostracized for it or otherwise punished for it, he rolls with it because he knows there have been plenty of times he has lied and got away with it. So it all comes out in the wash, I guess, you know. We forget about, we forget about those moments. We often do, and it, <laughs> it, it, that's always important. That was important for me to learn. Uh, the number here is 343-9927 if you'd like to call in and follow up on anything. Area code 225-343-9927. We are... Having a discussion here on a pause for thought, and we're discussing if there is such a thing as a bad human being. And I think we were we were getting on to the area where uh, a baby is born, but it has some kind of genetic defect that causes it to do terrible things to people when it gets older, or it's it has a propensity to respond extremely violently when it perceives that it's been done wrong. Um, would 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 that uh, to me I would call that a bad person or not? I'm sorry, I take that back. A bad human being, in the sense of a vegetable having gone rotten. You know, it's the biological aspect of them that is not good, so to speak. I hate saying bad because it sounds so judgmental, but there is something not good or harmful in their biology. And can we fault somebody for that? I think that's probably where our uh, court and justice criminal system comes into play that they're basically equivalent to being insane or equivalent to not being able to live um, as a normal person in the normal um, setting in society and that that person is quote bad in some way genetically bad uh, compared to other people but yet they they do have to be separated for our protection of life right right and all life protection Yes, in fact, I I know of a person who committed um, nonviolent crimes, but they were considered to be socially unacceptable and was told that the police treated him very compassionately when they they put him in jail and let his wife come and visit him and everything else. And In fact, there was one time when his wife left and he broke down and cried, and the next time his wife came, they told her, don't ever make him cry again. Don't ever do that to him, whatever you said. The cops were, were compassionate toward him because I guess back then, and we're talking back in the, the 50s, um, we had few enough people in prisons and we had cops that could be calm enough and you know be able to be more human than today's hectic pace and things like that. But So, so they understood that he was just somebody who had had problems growing up and now they were manifesting themselves. You guys got anything else? We're about out of time here. Nothing, huh? Y'all talked I, out. <laughs> I I do want to wish uh, everyone listening a, a happy holiday, and uh, that, that's all I got to say, really. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I wish everyone a, a great holiday, and I hope you all come back next week. Um, we're done for today. Next week's show will be an interview with Dan Collins, who is a landman here in Louisiana, who just won a lawsuit against the Department of Natural Resources over a questionable land deal. So I hope you'll join us next week for a pause for thought. This is Wayne Parker signing off, and I'd like for you all to remember that the words of Margaret Mead were, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you for listening.